Welcome back to the best of Dotto Tech Graphics Edition. All of those digital SLRs making their way into our hands means we're looking for higher end print solutions. Now Epson has some wonderful large format printers. In this piece, we showed you how these printers work on everything except paper. We've done a lot of very cool projects with our printers in the past, but most of them have been paper-based projects. After all, printers print on paper. But new ink technologies and the advances in the paper handling capabilities in today's printers gives us the opportunity to print on more than just paper. Epson makes canvas for their printers and it comes in rolls. You have to cut it down to size before printing, but you can make beautiful paintings like this. Now, there are two things that a printer needs to do before you can print on different media. First of all, you have to have a feed mechanism to allow for different media types, and you need an ink that's gonna work on different medias. It really all comes down to the ink technology because not all printers will, for example, print on canvas. For this printer, though, it's a piece of cake because Epson's Ultra Chrome inks are pigment-based inks. Now, most printers use dye-based inks. And there's nothing wrong with dye-based ink, it's fine. Dye-based actually penetrates the surface of the media and it actually dyes it. It just penetrates that little surface layer so it actually dyes, say, the fibers of paper that it's printing on. But pigment-based inks are like paint. The ink rests on top of the media and then it bonds to it. So for things like a canvas, if you had a dye-based ink, it would spread within the canvas. You wouldn't get a nice, clean image. Pigment-based ink rests on top like paint, and you can then print to canvas. Let's look at how we would go about actually creating or turning a photograph into a painting, which becomes then a piece of art. I've got Adobe Photoshop Elements open here. Most photo editing packages will have filters that will allow us to convert regular photographs into artwork. And if we take a look here in the filter area, we'll find a series of artistic filters that we can apply to our photo. We got a nice photo here of boats and a canal. Looks good enough as a photo, but if we convert this into a painting, it might just look spectacular. Now, all of these filters are available to us right away. We can also download more. Once you, you probably want to experiment with them all, but once you choose one, you can modify it even more to adjust, say, the brush size within the photo. Once you've got all your settings right, you take a look. Here, we've taken a photo and converted it into a nice, piece of art. One thing you have to do though at the very end is you have to take a paintbrush yourself, black paint, and then do a nice signature on it because after all, you are the artiste. Now, I'm in the mood for more media. What about transparencies? Ah, you can see right through me. You know, transparencies used to equal boredom. The only thing we used transparencies for in the past was overheads for presentations. Oh, well, now all of the same benefits of pigment-based inks apply to transparencies and we can make brilliant ones. We see light boxes all over the place. Those are the, the little boxes with a translucent cover that have light behind for signage and other advertising type applications. So here is a great example of that. We just fired this off, printed it off. Today's special, Submarine Sandwiches, $3.99. Looks delicious. I'll have three, thanks. You can use it for, for restaurant type applications, for trade shows, or any type of signage. There's our logo. Maybe we should incorporate this into the set. A nice light box in the set. Is it time for Extreme Set Makeover, Dotto Tech Edition? Now, transparencies also work great for seasonal projects for kids, window art, things like Halloween or Christmas, being able to create a transparency, hang it in the window, and use nature's light box to illuminate it. Let's move on and look at some other things that aren't paper, such as CDs and DVDs. Now, this is an inkjet printable CD. Now, the key thing about the printer being able to handle inkjet printable CDs or DVDs is you need something called a flat paper path. We can't bend this around a printhead, so we need to be able to take media in flat and then send it out flat, and the R1800 does that with a plum. Now, you've got a, a little utility here that ships with the Epson that allows us to label and create our own labels for inkjet printable CDs and DVDs. And the unique thing about this is not just text and graphics, but you can also incorporate photos on it, which can give you some really nice looking labels for your CD and DVD collection. And they've also got, besides the, the white ones which we just looked at, they have these ones here now that have a matte finish that will accept inkjet so you can print on the silver lining. I guess there is a silver lining. <laughs> if we take a look here, an example of the kind of professional quality that you can put on your own labels quickly and easily. Now this is ideal for doing things like birthday party videos that you're going to share with your family and labeling your own collection. We need more things that aren't paper. How about t-shirts? T-shirts aren't paper, so you can do T-shirt transfers that says, uh, I'm with stupid, or you can do a black T-shirt that says, I'm with stupid, but I'm wearing a black T-shirt. There's also printable fabric, so you can do your own quilting projects, or you can make pillows, or you can make some really, really cool 
bandages. The Epson R1800 has been discontinued since we taped that demo. The new model number is the R1900. It does all the things the R1800 did, but it's 100 better.